Good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad you're here. It's such a beautiful day, and we're glad that you decided to come and be with us this afternoon. This is such an exciting day for us. Um, uh, this is part of our 50th anniversary celebration. And back over a year ago, when the board of directors of the Dallas Harp Society decided to try to do something special for the 50th anniversary, we sat and we sat and spread for him. Finally came up with something that had to do with compositions. Somebody said, well, let's com commission somebody to write something. Well, we thought about how much that would cost and maybe it was out of our range. So somebody said, well, let's have a, com a composition contest. And uh, everybody said, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Well, I think we didn't realize how much work it was going to be. And what I did, of course, as president, I can delegate. So I delegated four of our members to put this show on the road, shall we say. Uh, Jennifer Solis was our chairman, chairwoman, I guess we should say. Patrick Stanfield, Carol West, and Dr. Laura Logan were part of the committee. And those four did amazing things. First of all, they set up all the rules. They had to do a lot of research to figure out what the rules should be. And then they applied for grants from uh, the American Harp Society National, and then Patrick, who works for the Bank of America, applied for another grant. We received both those grants for $500 each. And then our society then agreed to put in $500. So we had $1,500 for prize money and for other costs, and there we were. Once we had all that in place, the job was to advertise. And advertise they did because we had entries from all over the world and there were 32. And then, of course, we had a deadline for everyone to submit their entries, and which was August 1st of last year. And then we had to choose some judges to judge these. Our judges were Yumiko Mendo Schlafer, who was a member of our Heart Society. Uh, Dr. Jamie Hagner from UNT as the Heart Professor was another judge, and then. Uh, Dr. Newell K. Brown, who is a composition professor at UNT, was, he's retired now. So those three worked diligently to find the winners. And apparently, each one of them listened separately and came to the conclusion, the winner's conclusions, the same. So um, this is kind of a, an, an effort that everybody agreed on and was really excited to have this coming together today. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to um, those of the, those who, and we are having a reception afterwards, thank you to Dr. Israel Solis and Starbucks and the Galleria for donating, donating coffee, also to the Chief Cake Factory for donating Chief Cake, and I'm going to have to say thank you so much to Jennifer Solis who put this meeting together today with help from lots of people, but she is the main sponsor of today's meeting. I'd like to introduce Jennifer Solis, and she'll take it from here. Thank you. Indirectly, the American Harp Society in Dallas had an international beginning, September 1959, at the first International Harp Contest in Israel, Pierre Jamet proposed the promotion and formation of an international association of harpists. He then organized the French section. Marcel Granjani responded by asking a number of leading U.S. harpists to join him in organizing the American Harp Society. The board of directors adopted a constitution January 21, 1962, with Lucille Lawrence, first president, shown here with Mr. Granjani and Israel's Mr. Propus. In June 1962, before leaving for the summer, I asked Lyon and Healy for the names of harpists in the Dallas area. I wrote a number of letters advising that we would like their assistance in organizing a Dallas area chapter. My draft of that letter is shown here. At the second International Harp Contest in September 1962, 
I attended the first meeting at the newly organized International Society of Harpists, Pierre Chamey presiding. Granjani had invited me to start a Dallas chapter. In this letter, December 12, 1962, he asked if I had found time to start a chapter, and I had. Let me tell you a little bit more about the first piece that you're going to hear. The inspiration for Valley of Butterflies comes from a specific region in southwest Turkey sitting on the beautiful Mediterranean Sea, forgive my Turkish pronunciation, Kalabakler Ledisi, or Butterfly Valley, is home to a multitude of butterfly species that breed there during the summer months. A few of these have been chosen as inspiration for the five character-like pieces that comprise this work. This piece was commissioned by the Turkish harpist Seren Nesipoglu, a dear friend of the composer's, who requested a new piece that she could premiere at the 2011 World Heart Congress. Merely a few days after the request, she died tragically. And the composer would like to honor her request in memory, the completion of this work. If you would please welcome to the stage one of our nearest and dearest and fantastic harpists, Miss Yumiko Ando Schleifer.
I'd like to tell you just a little bit about our grand prize winner, Gilad Cohen. Both of our prize winners are receiving one of these beautiful plaques. I have Gilad's here with me right now. I want to thank Patrick Stanfield. We tossed around a lot of ideas on what physical item to get for them, and it was at his recommendation that, and with his research, that we found these plaques. Thank you so much, Patrick. You're fantastic for taking care of all of this. Gilad is an Israeli composer who is currently studying at Princeton University. In fact, right now he is driving to New Jersey. I spoke with him about an hour ago, and he said to wish the trio his very best. He was very excited and also a little sad that he was stuck driving to New Jersey and not in Dallas, Texas. His piece, Trio for a Spry Clarinet, Weeping Cello, and Ruminating Harp, was just recently recorded earlier this month for the Israeli Chamber Project with the video shooting directed by composer and filmmaker Troy Harriam. I have a couple of quotes from you, and these come from the Israeli Prime Minister's Award Committee. In this piece, the acoustic instruments are exceptionally orchestrated in a varied rhythmic and melodic richness. The use of traditional way of playing is combined with unusual sonorities in both combinations within the ensemble and individual instruments. Now at the Israeli Prime Minister Award premiere, it was stated that the most interesting part of the concert and the one piece that received a highly enthusiastic reaction from the audience was Gilad's trio. No doubt it is a discovery, says Nick Shadow. Cohen's trio is packed with fascinating ideas and full with emotion and humor. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the grand prize winner, Gilad Cohen, trio for a spry clarinet, weeping cello, and ruminating heart.
Thank <laughs> you.